Okay, so in this lesson we're going to look at how to use the built-in formulas in Excel to find the probabilities for binomial experiments as well as for hypergeometric. So we're going to start off by constructing a probability distribution table for the binomial case. So in this example we have a shipment of 25 calculators that contains 20% defectives. We're going to randomly select and test four calculators with replacement. So let's review why this is binomial. Binomial experiments, remember, must satisfy four requirements. The first is that there are a fixed number of trials, and here, selecting and testing a calculator is a trial. We're going to do four of them, so we have four trials, so that n equals four. The second requirement is that each trial has only two possible outcomes, success and failure. In this case, the two possible outcomes are good or defective. Now, um, if I am going to define success here as a defective, so I'm going to let the value of my random variable x be the number of defectives. If success is defective, then the probability of success p is going to be the percentage of defectives of which there are 20, so the probability of defective p is 0.2. So we have a fixed number of trials, n equals 4. Uh, we have two possible outcomes, good or defective, and the probability of good is 0.2, and since we are sampling with replacement, we will have inde independent events, and this probability of success will remain constant. Thus, we have a binomial probability distribution. Now, if x represents a number of defectives, then we're going to fill in here the values of the random variable x with all the possible number of defectives. So it's always possible to get zero defective, so the smallest val number of defectives is x, and for every binomial experiment, the smallest possible value of x is zero. Well, we can also have exactly one defective, exactly two defectives, exactly three defectives, or exactly four if all of them are defective. So the values of the random variable go from zero to four, and in the case of binomial experiments, the number of defectives will always be from zero to n, the number of trials. Now we're going to compute the corresponding probabilities using the built-in formula binom dist, which is in the statistical formulas. So right here we see binom dist, and we click on it. And number s is the number of successes. This is our x. x is going to be different. It's going to take on values 0 through 4. So instead of typing in 0, what I'm going to do is actually highlight the cell that contains 0 so that this is a 5. That way when I copy this formula I'm typing in here, that cell will change as we move down the rows, and I don't have to re-enter this every time. The number of trials is 4. The probability of success p, we've already seen, is 0.2. And since we're finding individual probabilities, cumulative will be false. So when I click OK, I see here's my probability, and there's the formula we just filled in. Now if I want to copy this, I just point the cursor to the bottom right so it turns to a plus, click and drag, and that will copy the formula. And so notice now, as I move down the rows, the row for column A changes. See, here's A8, A9, so that I have then the probabilities that correspond to each value of the random variable. Now, since this is a binomial experiment, we do not have to use some product to find the mean and standard deviation, we can use some shorthand formulas. So recall that the mean for a binomial experiment is found by just taking n, the number of trials, and multiplying that by p, the probability of success. So here, that will equal 4 trials times p, which is 0.2, so that the mean of this distribution is 0.8. We can see that that makes sense by looking at the table here, because the highest probability is both 0 and 1 equally, so then that the mean, if thought of as a balance point, will have to be somewhere between 0 and 1. 
but it's going to be pulled towards the 1 because there's these extra probabilities giving some extra weight to these higher values of x. So it'll be a number bigger than 0.5. And we see here that it was actually 0.8, which is greater than 0.5, but between 0 and 1. Now, to find the standard deviation, you may recall that the formula is a square root of n times p, the probability of success, times 1 minus p, the probability of failure. So, we will find that by doing equals the square root of n is 4 times p, which is 0.2 times 1 minus that point 2, which is point 8. And that turns out to be point 8. And the fact that the mean and standard deviation are the same is simple mathematical coincidence in this case. All right. OK, so let's now look at how to use the hypergeometric formula to find probabilities for a hypergeometric experiment. So we have a very similar scenario, 25 calculators with 20% effectives. We're going to randomly and select randomly select and test four calculators, but this time they will be different. Because we are selecting different calculators, this is sampling without replacement. We still have four trials. Each trial still has two possible outcomes, good or defective. But now, since we are sampling without replacement from a small population, we are going to have dependent events and thus conditional probabilities. And that makes this a hypergeometric experiment. As before, we'll let x be the number of defectives. So x can take on the value of zero defectives exactly 1, exactly 2, exactly 3, or all four defectives. So the values of the random variable look exactly the same as it does for the uh, binomial. Computing the probabilities, though, is going to be different, because instead of having independent trials and constant probabilities, and thus using a binome formula, we have dependent trials and conditional probabilities, so that we are going to be using the hype geom dist command because we have a hypergeometric probability experiment here. So we go to more functions, statistical, and we scroll until we find the hype geom dist formula and click on that. Now here, sample s is the number of successes in the sample, and that corresponds to our x. So as before, I'm going to click on the cell so it pays a5 here, so that when I copy that formula, it will change this cell as it moves to each uh, different row. Now the number in the sample is 4. Population of successes. This is the number of successes in the population. And remember, we're defining defective as a success. So this actually then is going to be the number of defectives in a population of 25 calculators. All right? So 20% of 25 is 5. Right? You can actually compute that here. How about I do this? Let's go equals. So I'm going to have to cancel this and we'll come back. But what we want to do then is find the number of defectives in this population would be 20% of the 25, right? So there's that five defectives, OK? So let's now go back, knowing that there's five defectives out of 25. We'll go back to our statistical functions, find the hype geom dist. We will click on the cell for the sample, number of successes in the sample. Remember, the number in the sample is the number of trials 4. Population of uh, successes, the number of successes in the population, we computed that, remember, to be 5. So type in 5. The total number in the population, right, the population size is 25. Again, we're computing individual probabilities, so we will type in false. So when I hit OK, then here is the hypergeometric probability of having exactly zero defectives. 
and then if I put my cursor on the bottom right so it becomes a plus point or click and drag it will copy down that formula notice how it changes a6 a7 a8 a9 and here then are all the probabilities for this hypergeometric probability distribution now unlike a binomial probability distribution we don't have the shortcut formulas for finding the mean and standard deviation for the hypergeometric we're just going to do it using the formulas for a probability distribution so remember then the mean of a probability distribution is the sum product or I should say the sum of the x's times the p of x's right so remember that's the sum product of the x's times the p of x's so we can do that over here by doing our sum product so remember how to do that math trig scroll down to sum product array one are all the x's array two are the p of x's right we click OK and oh it looks like we have the same mean as for the binomial a uh, point eight if we look at this here we see that the biggest probabilities are again between zero and one though it's closer to the one alright so we have a mean that should be close to one here um, is it going to be pulled towards the zero or pulled towards the two well notice that 0.38 is bigger than the sum of 0.15 and all this so the zero has a greater weight so it will pull the mean down below one so this 0.8 then uh, is consistent with our table remember to find the standard deviation we have to do a sum oh well first actually to find the standard deviation we're going to find the square root of the variance and to find the variance we do a sum of the products of the difference between the random variable and the mean squared so remember this it's the squared it's a sum of the products of the squared differences with their corresponding probabilities all right so we need to find we need to calculate the squared differences between the mean and each of the values of the random variable so up here we will have x minus the mean squared all right so that's the formula we need to type in here so equals parenthesis so e equals parenthesis x click on that because that's going to change every time minus the mean now remember we want the mean to stay 0.8 it's not going to change so we need to fix it and we want dollar signs in front of the row and column and I can do that by highlight highlighting and hitting um, F4 so see that fixes the mean the cell that holds the mean so it won't change as it moves and we want to square that okay so now over here I want to make the little plus sign on the lower right click and drag it changes that each time so notice here we had the a5 and now here we have the a6 but the mean is staying the same notice the d11 is fixed a7 a8 a9 but that d11 stays fixed so to find um, the variance we need the sum product of the squared differences between the value of the random variables and the mean and the probability so again we go to math trig down to sum product array one are the squared differences array two are the probabilities okay and here 0.56 is the variance the standard deviation is the square root of the variance and so here if 
I round it to one decimal place because remember with discrete probability distributions we want our mean and standard deviation to one decimal place uh, we get the point seven yeah okay so that then is how you will f construct probability distributions for a hypergeometric and binomial experiments and also how to find the mean and standard deviation for both the binomial and the hypergeometric.